Hi, I'm Katherine Sims, and I am your Director of Student Affairs. I am also a very proud Double Bear. In this video, I'm going to share with you a bit about Baylor University, our history, and our traditions. And I'm going to talk about some events you can look forward to at the university and at the law school during your time in Waco. Now, I know your undergraduate roots are always going to remain the strongest, but it's important for you to know you're also part of the larger Baylor family. Baylor University was chartered on February 1st of 1845 by the Republic of Texas. Our original home was in Independence, Texas, and we are the oldest institution of higher education in the state. Our colors, as you can see behind me, are green and gold. And they were chosen in kind of a fun way. Um, there was a student who was traveling to a debate tournament in College Station who looked out the window and saw a field of wildflowers that were yellow and green, and he thought that that was a very beautiful combination. He made the recommendation that those be our school colors, and then they were voted on and chosen. Our mascot is the bear, and it was chosen over things like the bookworm, thank goodness. Um, buffalo and antelope were also finalists. We do have two live North American black bears who live on campus in a Class C zoo habitat. Uh, they are Indy and Belle. Indy is named for our original home of Independence, Texas, and Belle is named for um, the Carillion bells, which beautifully chime throughout campus. These bears are beloved and well taken care of, and I definitely recommend you go and say hello to them. Um, and they do fun things for game days, holidays, their birthdays. Um, it's just a true joy to see them running around and playing with each other in their habitat. Um, I also recommend checking out the Bear Trail, which is a path around a campus. It's a great way to get in some exercise and sunshine and see our beautiful I main campus just across the street from us. There are a couple things that um, are specifically for freshmen, and that is the Baylor line and our slime cap. So every single freshman has the opportunity to get a Baylor line jersey that will have their anticipated graduation year and a nickname on the back. Um, and then they can run out on the football field ahead of the team at every home football game. And after that, they would then sit behind the visiting team on the 50 yard line. Um, it's interesting to note that the school song is that good old Baylor line. Anyone who goes to Baylor University is part of our rich history and our fabric and that Baylor line. So back in the 1940s, upperclassmen used to refer to freshmen as slime and make them wear these little hats that had their graduation year on them, um, kind of like an initiation type thing. Um, but now, I mean, it's gotten through di different iterations over the years. When I was here as a big food fight, they've done foam fights and foam parties. Um, but now it is something that students get um, as part of their tradition week package and that they just really mostly display in their dorm rooms. Um, to proudly show that they are part of the freshman class. Um, and it's kind of cool too with these two items to see you know, families with multiple generations who've gone to Baylor and um, holding on to their, their jerseys and their slime caps, just to show again that rich history and being part of the Baylor line. So now on to some events. Um, and I will say that that doesn't, that didn't encompass all of our traditions. Those are just kind of the highlights. I certainly encourage you to continue to get to know Baylor University during your time as a Baylor Law student. Um, but there are some great events that you can take part of all over on main campus. And I encourage you to, uh, to check them out even just once during your time at Baylor Law. So each February, uh, there's all university thing and there will be six total performances. Um, and this is one of the largest off-Broadway productions uh, in the country. So student groups will put uh, together these wonderful routines that they spent over a year doing. Um, they pick the music, they do the choreography, they um, create the backdrops, the costumes, literally everything from start to finish these students put together. And it is so much fun. And it's so creative to see what the students do. I mean, this group just thought, let's make a, a a thing act based on goats, and then they went with it, and it was really, really cool. Um, and so the top eight acts get to perform at Pigskin, um, which is part of our homecoming celebration. So please definitely check this out one February. Dia de Loso, or Dia of the Bear, usually happens every April, and it's a day where uh, classes are canceled and there's a carnival-like environment on campus. There will be concerts, um, sporting events, there's usually goat yoga. Um, it's just a great time to get together as a, a Baylor community. 
Um, the law school is, is usually not closed to Alfred Deodoloso just because it's so close to our finals. Um, however, there's plenty of opportunities to go and check out one of the events, take a break from your studies. Um, and oftentimes we'll have law firms sponsor coffee trucks to the students in celebration of Dia de Loso. Homecoming. We have the oldest and largest collegiate homecoming in the country, and it is a very big deal, and it is so much fun. It starts on Thursday evening with a freshman mass meeting um, where students uh, learn and hear about Baylor traditions, uh, the, in particular the Immortal Ten. So this is a memorial uh, that is located in the interior of main campus. I'm um, representing 10 um, students and coaches who unfortunately lost their lives in a um, train accident on their way to um, Austin for a basketball game in the 1920s. Um, you'll see Abe Kelly up front because he um, looked over at the last minute and saw the train coming and was able to um, push his roommate and best friend out of the way and save his life. Um, these 10 individuals really represent that we should cherish each other and cherish life. Um, yeah, the, that's why they are called the Immortal Ten. Um, and then once the students hear the story of the Immortal Ten, um, they can go and start to build the bonfire um, on campus. So that is built for the pep rally. So kind of tradition has it that the freshmen would be building the bonfire um, and protecting the eternal flame um, kind of from the upperclassmen. So it's just meant to be kind of like a fun little homecoming activity. Um, and then there are Bruiser and Marigold, our sideline mascots at Baylor um, at one of the homecoming bonfires and pep rallies. A lot of fun on the interior main campus. And then on Saturday, we have a really great parade that starts in downtown and comes down the center of campus. And the law school always hosts a breakfast um, at the parade. And that's a great way for you to network with the lawyers and just kind of hang out with your friends and enjoy one of Baylor's favorite traditions. You'll see that the students spend a ton of time on these floats, that, that Ferris will actually move. Um, so they, this is another thing that they start working on at least a year in advance. And it is something that they take very, very seriously. Um, and it's always really neat to see what they come up with. And as you can see, um, hundreds upon hundreds of um, Baylor grads come back every year to enjoy homecoming with their friends and family. And then of course there's a football game and then there will be tailgates um, for different classes. The last kind of major community-wide event of the year is gonna be Christmas on 5th, and it's a great way to kick off the holiday season. Um, so campus really becomes a winter wonderland. There's a tree lighting, there's a con concert, um, there's President Livingstone going down a, kind of a fake snow hill. Um, there's gonna be carriage rides and petting zoos and all sorts of great things. So it's just a really um, fun time to get on main campus and see it completely transformed. This is probably the number one event that I see um, our students going to, which is kind of fun. Um, and so I definitely encourage you to check out these events or really anything else going on on main campus. Um, if there's a speaker event or um, sort of a concert or really whatever it is, please know that you're invited and welcome to participate. Now, what are some things that you're gonna see um, every single year at the law school? Um, there's gonna be a number of things. Some are required, some are just options. I'm gonna talk about a few of those things, but please know that this is not an exhaustive list of the things that you can expect to see every single year. Um, as your director of student affairs, I'm always looking for, for fun events and activities and ways for us to get together as a community. So judicial, judicial clerkship reception is always a really popular event. Um, it's part of our professional development programming, which you'll learn about from Dean Cruz Turner and Dean Bridges. Um, now, being a judicial clerk is an opportunity that happens after you graduate from law school. It's usually a one-year one year appointment, sometimes two, and it's a really prestigious opportunity. Students who get these um, can really write their ticket after that. So um, we really encourage our first-year students to attend the judicial clerkship, PDP, and reception, so that way they can learn as early as possible about what they can be doing to set themselves up for success when it comes to getting a judicial clerkship. So here you can see um, the post, the PDP, where they've learned about what a judicial, judicial clerkship is and the processes. Um, and now they are interacting with some judicial uh, clerks as well as some federal judges. And we always have a, a solid percentage of our class go on to be judicial clerks when upon graduation. Something that is required of all of our students is participation in the 1L moot court competition. This happens every, um, 
spring and fall. And so it's part of our legal writing program. So um, there's going to be an appellate brief that you'll draft. So the trial has happened, a decision has been rendered, and then someone is appealing that decision. And so you will draft a brief to a panel of judges and then also do the oral advocacy component um, with a partner of your choosing. And so these are some students in one of our recent moot court competitions during the final round. Um, and then with their, their plaques showing that they were the final, final two teams in competition. So it's a great way to kind of get your, your feet wet when it comes to advocacy, and then you can kind of leave it, leave it behind. You can participate in the competition team. Um, you can, yes, so there's lots of opportunities when it comes to advocacy, but know that um, this is the only thing that's required in your first year. And then you would see it again, obviously, in practice court, which you'll hear a lot about during your time at Baylor Law. Firm connections is another opportunity for first year students. So we found that that firms really want to connect um, earlier with law students. Um, and so this is a really wonderful networking opportunity. Um, so we bring law firms from major cities around the state of Texas and kind of divide students into the small groups. And you go around and you get to talk to these different firms, learn about what they do, learn about their cultures, ask questions. So it's a really great way to practice networking. Um, figure out what kind of firms you might be interested in, and potentially even get some sort of an internship experience out of this. So the Bob and Karen Wortham Mad Dog competition is a solo mock trial competition available to uh, third year students who are in practice court. It is not required, it is optional to participate, but the winner will receive um, a cash prize and then a mini Mad Dog statue. Um, so this is one of the most recent final rounds and then uh, one of our most recent winners. Um, so Matt, Mad Dog Dawson is a former practice court um, professor and director. Um, and the statue was dedicated in his honor many years ago. And so now the winner gets kind of a mini Mad Dog prize. So he's just a story figure in the Hall of Baylor Law. So there's lots of, so that, that covered a lot of you know, academic and career oriented things you can look forward to, but there's also some you know, some fun and relaxing things that we do together. Um, midnight breakfast and French toast with the faculty um, are two examples. They're, they're, they're similar. So the idea is the week, the last week of classes, you're gearing up really and truly for finals and the faculty get together to serve our students breakfast, to show them, um, to show them some love and some encouragement as they get ready to kind of dive into their study hold for finals. So every fall and spring, we do midnight for the midnight breakfast in the evening and every um, winter and summer, we do French toast with the faculty in the morning. Adoption day is quite possibly the best day at Baylor Law. So each, each November, um, along with National Adoption Day, um, we bring the families who are finalizing adoptions in the foster care system in McClendon County to the law school and throw them a party. We, the, final, the adoptions are finalized there. Um, and then there's a huge party based on a theme. You can see a few that we've had in recent years. Um, we have faculty and students dressed up here. Students worked on that backdrop. Um, this, the law school truly transforms and it is such a joyous and wonderful day. We've had face painting stations, lots of local businesses donate food. Um, it's a wonderful reminder that, you know, we're here to really give back to those around us. And as attorneys, we can do really cool things um, for people. So as the Director of Student Affairs, I work really closely with our diversity and event coordinator, and she and I both um, are so passionate about making sure that our students understand that they all belong here at Baylor Law. Uh, we want you to um, celebrate each other and your differences. We want to learn from everyone, and we want to provide these opportunities throughout the year. So if there is a, um, a, a particular Heritage Month, um, Sam will create um, an opportunity for learning through a quiz day um, where students put um, their fellow students and faculty and staff to the test. There will be a lunch, you know, celebrating everyone uh, from a certain background. Um, there's also going to be an opportunity for something fun. Um, so you can see here, um, there's some opportunities and things that we've done uh, recently. So for Asian American um, Pacific Islander Month, Heritage Month, we did a dumpling folding class. Um, this was our Black History Month quiz day one year. This is our Hispanic um, Heritage Month luncheon one year. 
And then for Native American Heritage Month, we had the Anoli dancers come and share a bit about their culture and their dances with us. And so this is just a handful of the opportunities we've seen recently. Um, I want to encourage you, you know, I've said all this in my student affairs video, but I want to encourage you to um, bring forth your own ideas. We want to create community here at Baylor Law and help everyone find their place. And so your ideas and your voice, they truly matter. Um, and so we look forward to celebrating you and learning from and with you during your time at the law school. And finally, Baylor Law in the community. Um, we truly believe that the legal field is a service-based field first and foremost, and we want to instill the importance of serving others and our students as often as possible. And that doesn't mean just with our legal skills, it's with our time, our talent, and our energy. Um, and so we provide different opportunities for our students throughout the year to really engage with the local community and serve those around us in Waco and in Central Texas. Of course, we do that through our pro bono program and um, through our legal clinics. So I encourage you to consider participating in those starting in your second year. So here's a few other things we've done recently. Um, so around Christmas time, we visited a couple of different elementary schools here in Waco. We provided t-shirts, our students read to them. Um, it's really important that these, these kids see that they can do and be anything they want to do and be. Um, and to think big and to dream big. And so uh, it was really special this past Christmas to visit a couple of different elementary schools, Bell Hill and J.H. Hines, um, and provide them with t-shirts and provide them with books and introduce them to students um, and show them, hey, you could, you could be there one day. Um, this was from service day. So we always get together um, one Saturday and do a variety of different service projects. Um, whether that be organizing clothes at Caritas, which is like Salvation Army, um, helping out with the animals at the Humane Society, um, moving bricks and, and plywood at um, Habitat for Humanity. We really want to, again, make sure we're giving back to those around us um, on that day and others. Um, this past fall, we did a food drive and it was so much fun and we will definitely be doing that um, again and again and again. Um, the idea was to uh, get food for food for families that um, Central Texas KWTF radio station does every November. Um, and then we kind of made a game out of it to get everyone engaged. So um, there was a line of boxes with faculty pictures on it and students would vote for who they wanted to be in a dunking booth at our fall festival by putting it, uh, food in those boxes. And so we raised hundreds of boxes um, for food for families. We also did a book drive in conjunction with that and were able to raise a few hundred dollars to buy books to donate to J.H. Hines Elementary. So again, it's really important to give back um, to our community, not just with uh, the skills that our students are learning in, in law school, but just with our, our time and energy, money, um, food, any way that we can come together as a community to do those things is, is something that we really enjoy doing with our students. And that kind of brings me to the end. Um, again, this was just kind of a snapshot of some things that you can look forward to during your time at Baylor Law. Um, I look forward to getting to know you and working with you over the next few years. If you ever have any questions about Baylor University um, or Waco, never hesitate to reach out to me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.